Good afternoon, graduates, families, and loved ones. Welcome to the School of Neuroscience Commencement Ceremony for the Class of 2020. My name is Kristen Phillips, and I'm a faculty member here in the School of Neuroscience. And it's an honor to be here today during this virtual commencement. Virtual commencement are two words I never thought I'd be saying. I expected to be standing on a stage congratulating you face to face. And I know that this is not what any of you envisioned for your own graduation. But I hope that this ceremony, even though it's virtual, will still convey our pride and excitement for your accomplishments. For the last four years or so, you've called Virginia Tech home and your experiences here have shaped you. You formed deep and lasting friendships. You made mistakes that turned into lessons learned. You learned to think critically, ask questions, and make decisions based on evidence. From afar, your families watched you grow into the young adults you are. And today, they were looking forward to cheering you on as you walked across that stage. Instead, you sit with them at home, watching me on your screen. I hope you are still celebrating in some socially distanced manner, and I hope that you experience a very well-deserved sense of accomplishment for your achievements. I also hope you're still wearing your cap and gown, because I can't be the only one in the room wearing this fabulous outfit. Over the last couple of months, I've listened to your disappointment. I've watched you mourn the loss of your senior year in all of the events that you were so very much looking forward to. But I also saw your hokey spirit shine through and witnessed incredible displays of compassion and adaptability. You sought ways to stay connected with your peers and lift them up, especially those that you saw needed it the most. You extended yourself, your peers, and your faculty some grace as we all navigated this strange new reality. The end of a senior year is typically characterized by senioritis, and this year was no exception. Senioritis combined with coronavirus-induced isolation is a recipe for a serious lack of motivation. And yet, you continued to show up. You adapted to the circumstances, even though they were less than ideal, and you didn't give up. It's a testament to your work ethic and commitment to your education. And for this, we're proud. The people that make the School of Neuroscience run and provide you with the experiences and education that you've received are the outstanding faculty and committed academic advisors. Our faculty are trailblazers in their fields. They have shown you firsthand how fascinating and complicated the human brain is. They have challenged you and they have inspired you. We want to thank you for allowing us to be a part of your education. Our academic advisors are invaluable. Their jobs go far beyond force adding you and helping you with your four-year plan. Each day they show up to work looking for ways to help you reach your goals. They've also worked tirelessly over the last few weeks to make this virtual ceremony a reality. I want to thank them for always putting their hearts into everything they do for you and for the School of Neuroscience. When you left Virginia Tech's campus 10 weeks ago, you expected that you'd return, and we expected you to as well. All of us are disappointed that we can't congratulate you in person, so we'd like to take a few minutes to share our best wishes with you. But you'll have to forgive us for the quality of the upcoming recording. You see, we used Zoom because that's how we communicate now. So the technological glitches that you see should be pretty familiar. Congratulations, class of 2020. 
Enjoy your accomplishments and show the world what a neuroscientist can do. Go Hokies. To the class of 2020, congratulations on your achievement and thank you. Wish you all the best of luck on your future endeavors. It's been a privilege to get the opportunity to work alongside all of you the past four years as students, volunteers, researchers, teaching assistants, football fans, and perhaps most importantly, as Hokies. Congratulations, Neuroscience Class of 2020. You've earned it. Class of Spring 2020 graduates, congratulations. Your experiences here at Virginia Tech has fully equipped you to be exceptional in all your future endeavors. So embrace life, don't be limited by your challenges, and in your path of becoming great, never forget the human element. Be kind and help each other. Congratulations. Hello to the 2020 graduates. Congratulations. And just wanted to say hello to you, to your family, and to your friends. I really wish that we could be together today to celebrate with you. Unfortunately, we can't. But we're all thinking of you and hoping that you do well and looking forward to seeing what you do next. Congratulations again. Congratulations to the class of 2020. I hope that your time here at Virginia Tech has inspired you to go on and do great things uh, in the future. It would, personally, it was a great pleasure to be your professor during this time. Congratulations again. Congratulations, class 2020. Now you're well prepared to serve your community, serve your country, serve the whole world. I wish everybody a bright future. Congratulations. I'm so proud of you and I feel privileged to know all of you. Congratulations class of 2020. Uh, thanks for being a part of our lives and our labs and best of luck for everything you get into in the future. Hello graduating class of 2020. It's been a joy getting to know you and I wish you all the success in the world as you embark on the next phase of your journey through life. Remember the words of Francis Crick, there is no scientific study more vital to man than the study of his own brain, as our entire view of the universe depends on it. I can't wait to hear about all of your accomplishments. Congratulations, class of 2020. Congratulations, class of 2020. While it may not have seemed like it at times, I promise it, uh, it was well worth it. Uh, so again, congrats and uh, good luck. Congratulations, class of 2020. I want to say thank you very much for your hard working during the past four years, especially during this challenging semester. I hope all of you can try your best to achieve your life goals, your career goals, and I wish all of you will have a bright future. Congratulations. Hello, class of 2020. Congratulations. This is such an exciting time. All of us have been so privileged to have you in our classes and in our labs. We wish you the best of luck and we can't wait to see what great things you go on and do. Congratulations, class of 2020. Uh, good luck on your future endeavors and celebrate the day with your family and friends. These are certainly unusual times, but you did it anyways. Congratulations, class of 2020. And special shout out to Katie, Malika, Nikki, Drew, and Dayton. We are missing you, and we will certainly miss you even more once you're really gone and graduated. But we also can't wait to see what you're going to do next. Hey, class of 2020, congratulations. It's been a distinct pleasure getting to know many of you. So you're graduating at a most inauspicious time. Well, welcome to the real world. But See this as an opportunity, not a crisis. Go ahead and seize the day, do good work, be of good cheer. Congratulations and best of luck to all of you. Uh, to the class of 2020, this is uh, probably not exactly how you expected your time at Virginia Tech to end. Um, and it may feel like trouble is just lurking over your shoulder, but uh, this will also end as well and things will get back to normal and you will have 
Uh, you've been very well prepared for an exciting career and future ahead of you. So congratulations and good luck. Congratulations, class of 2020. I wish you all the best in the next chapter of your life. And whatever you do, I encourage you to strive to do your best and to always try to give something back to others. Congratulations. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. Several years ago when we had class together, no one in their wildest dreams could imagine that the world would look the way it does today. Hopefully your training here at Virginia Tech has given you a new perspective on both the biology, the neuroscience, and the psychology of what's going on. The world has been the best proof that an understanding of science on many dimensions and perspectives is the key to health and prosperity. Please use what we have taught you to make the world a better place. That can be accomplished through obvious means by becoming a scientist, a doctor, or a teacher, but also by many, many other ways, including simply educating your groups of friends and family and setting an example for others to follow. My advice to you is to do what makes you happy. Like I told you in class, teaching was my plan C and when I was where you are now, I never imagined that I was smart enough to be a scientist. Life is funny and will reward you as long as you have the grit and self-motivation to get things done. And in the end, just as long as you are a good person, all of us here at Virginia Tech will be very proud of you. Hi everyone, welcome. This is the School of Neuroscience advising team. We are so happy to be with you all virtually. Um, and we just want to send a shout out because we weren't able to do this in person to our class of 2020. Woo! And I just wanted to say I'm Sarah Bechtel and I'm one of your academic advisors. I've seen many of you grow and develop and I'm so proud of you all. So thank you for working with me and I wish you all the best in your next adventures. Hi all, this is Annie Labe Jenkins, your former academic advisor. And I just wanted to say congratulations, grads. I'm so proud of you, and I wish you the best in your future careers. Please keep in touch. Hey, everyone. This is Mohamed Sabah. I've had the privilege of getting to know you as a student back when I was a student. And now that I'm an advisor, I've had a year with you guys as, um, you know, your advisor. So I've had the privilege of getting, getting to know you in two different ways. So to me, I think class of 2020 is special, but don't tell the other classes. Also, if you're wondering about this here, it's just my stash, but you don't have to worry about that. This is your day. Hey guys, uh, Alex Polarconis here. Uh, I know that our time together may have been short-lived as I only just joined the staff, but uh, having been in your situation just two years before this, I know the excitement that you guys must be feeling, and I want to make sure that you all take the time to celebrate yourselves today. So congratulations, class of 2020. The School of Neuroscience is a community. It's a home a place that instills curiosity and encourages you to keep asking questions. We are the first school of neuroscience in the country. And at last count, we're also the largest undergraduate neuroscience program. The opportunity for you to be a part of this was only possible because of the vision of one person. Dr. Harold Sondheimer believed that anybody could study neuroscience and neuroscience could be applied to careers far beyond the typical medicine and research. You have proven this to be true. While there are indeed a large number of you planning to attend medical school and graduate school, there's also a large number that will be applying your knowledge in neuroscience to careers in public policy and public health, law, medical genetics, psychology, and consulting. Dr. Sondheimer's ingenuity led to the program that you've been a part of and have helped grow. He recognized the breadth of neuroscience and created four separate majors that catered to your wide-ranging interests. He recruited talented scientists who he knew would make waves in research and would also be compelling teachers and dedicated mentors. He supported ideas even when he thought they were crazy, like study abroad. He encouraged students to get involved in research and made sure there were funds available to support summer research fellowships, as well as invite renowned speakers to speak with you. Above all, his mission has been to create an experience 
that made a degree in neuroscience from Virginia Tech worth it. Please welcome the Executive Director of the School of Neuroscience, Dr. Harold Sontheimer. Thank you, Dr. Phillips. Welcome, Class of 2020. Welcome, families and friends. I know it's bittersweet to end your college experience with a virtual celebration. However, make no mistake, there is nothing virtual about the significance of today. There's nothing virtual about your experiences and the many accomplishments that you had over the past four years. I am so proud of you. I had the pleasure to get to know you in class, during office hours, in the laboratory, some of you in the clinic, and many of you in our study abroad trip. Parents, let me congratulate you as you have a daughter or son to be proud of. Students, four years ago, you were only the second class to come to Virginia Tech into a neuroscience program. You came with excitement and expectations, yet I bet you your actual experience has by far exceeded even your wildest expectations. Throughout those four years, there were many firsts. You joined the first school of neuroscience in the world. It was literally approved the day you set foot on campus in 2016. There is Sandy Hall. You were the first to move into Sandy Hall as your physical home of neuroscience anchored on the drill field. And some of you ventured on the first neuroscience study abroad trip. You all enjoy the curriculum that defines neuroscience in a much broader context than any other university. Some of you took the clinical neuroscience experience class in Roanoke. Others learned about global neuroscience in Europe. You learned about neuroscience of language and communication, of drug addiction, genetics, artificial intelligence, and neural engineering. You even had active service members visit you in the War and the Brain class. The list of amazing experiences is near endless. But most importantly, throughout, our faculty taught you to be inquisitive, critical, and data-centered. To always ask for evidence and base your decision on scientific data. You know, there is no room for hearsay or fake news in neuroscience. And you know better than to listen to anyone who cannot show you the source of their data or the source of their information. Your experience at Virginia Tech has been truly transformative. It has forged you into the versatile, adaptive, and resilient individuals you are today who can readily conquer just about any challenge thrown at them. Be that in medicine or research, be that in business, marketing, communication, law, policy or politics, you name it, you will make a positive difference in the world. Thank you for letting me and our faculty be part of your journey. I wish you the best of luck for the future, but please stay in touch, email, call. We love to know what you do and we love to brag about your accomplishments. Remember, the School of Neuroscience is like Hotel California. You can check out, but you can't ever leave. Class of 2020, you rock. And now, it's my privilege to introduce the keynote speaker, Dr. Georgia Hodes. Dr. Hodes is a leading researcher in neuroimmunology and she studies the effect of peripheral inflammation on stress resilience and depression. She trained at Rutgers University with postdoctoral training at Mount Sinai in New York. Dr. Hodes was among the first professors to join and help launch the School of Neuroscience in 2016. Dr. Hodes, welcome to the podium. First and foremost, I want to congratulate the Virginia Tech School of Neuroscience Class of 2020 for all you have accomplished. You should be proud of your fortitude in the face of this current adversity. You and your families have been burdened with graduating during a pandemic. At a time when normally we would all join together in joy, we are faced with celebrating separately, but not alone. 
I came to Virginia Tech four years ago because I was excited by the energy of the students and faculty for building a school of neuroscience. Together we have created something really important here. I am thrilled to be your keynote speaker because your class is a milestone. You are the first class to graduate that started at the same time as the first cohort of faculty. We have known most of you since your freshman year. I've had the pleasure of teaching many of you. I have been honored to have members of your class work in my laboratory. It has been wonderful to watch you all grow and find your paths. I know that some of you are still seeking, and you should know that that's okay too. My path to Virginia Tech was anything but typical. I was raised in New York City, the child of artists. I went to Bard College, a small liberal arts school where I majored in drama dance. I had planned to be an actress since I was seven years old. It really had never occurred to me to do anything else. I spent a few years after college acting in New York and working as a gift basket designer to support myself. While my acting success was limited, I was actually a very successful gift basket designer. Who knew that piling fruit into pretty patterns could pay so well? But I wasn't very happy with my life. I wasn't intellectually stimulated by what I was doing. I realized that the last time I had felt really happy was in college. I thought I knew myself, but I started to understand how important it was to me to be challenged, to always be learning. I figured I would take the classes I needed to get into graduate school and then teach at a small liberal arts college like the one I went to. But what should I study? I'd always had a side interest in science. I knew that there were not enough women in STEM and schools would pay you to get a graduate degree. I had all these questions about emotions and memory that stem from acting in my past. My first semester taking extra baccalaureate classes at Hunter College I took brain and behavior and I fell in love. I knew right then and there that this was what I wanted to study. I ended up working in two labs performing research. One was examining site-specific habituation in electric catfish, and the other was studying mirror self-recognition in beluga whales, quite different from what I do now. I can tell you that behavioral studies in electric catfish are not nearly as exciting as they sound. However, to the professor that I was working with, he thought they were the most interesting thing in the world. After 40 years of studying electric fish, he was still fascinated and passionate about what he was doing. I remember at the time thinking, if I can still be that excited by my work, that's a pretty good life. While in his lab, I discovered that electric catfish habituate to having their tails poked meaning that they stop releasing a shock, but not when you touch their heads. This was groundbreaking research, I know. When I showed him my results, he looked me in the eye and said, this is something that you discovered. Right now, you and I are the only people in the world who know this. I still think that every time, whenever me or my lab makes a discovery. I got into graduate school at Rutgers University. There my advisor taught me how to tell a good story and communicate my science to others. I fell in love with doing research while I was in her lab. I had moved on to rodents at this time. I found that my goals had shifted again and now I needed to end up somewhere that I could have an active research program, not only teach. I just wasn't sure if that was industry or academia. So I did a postdoc at Penn where I'd be working closely with a pharmaceutical company. I learned there that I didn't really like pharmacology research. I wanted to understand what goes wrong and why, not only which drug or dose was best for changing behavior or treating an illness. I also had my first daughter during this time and I was shocked to find that my passion for science had suddenly waned. I remember talking to my primary investigator and he said it's a hard moment when your science goes from being your religion to just a job, but it's because the other parts of your life have taken on such importance. I felt really lost at this time. So I moved back to New York and I took a second postdoc at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. This was a big risk. I joined the lab of a brand new PI studying molecular neuroscience, which I knew close to nothing about. It was one of the best decisions I ever made. I came alive scientifically. I followed the data and ended up learning all about the immune system as well as the brain. 
My research shifted into how the immune system is involved in mental illness. I started to examine how the body changes the brain. The most important thing that my experience taught me was to take risks, that my path didn't have to be linear, that even if I never got a faculty position, it had been worth it. The process, the experiences were more important than the end result. I had my second daughter during this time, and I found out I was just as passionate about science as I was about her. When I was hired for a faculty position by Virginia Tech, I had to move away again from my, fam my parents and friends. This time I had to take my children away from their grandparents, my husband away from his career. I'm not going to lie, I still struggle with this, especially right now. But here, I became a part of an amazing startup. I got to work with incredible, brilliant faculty made up of people who were just as passionate about science as I am. I got to live in this amazing place and experience beauty on a daily basis. I got to help build a department. I got to help decide what classes our undergraduate and graduate programs should teach. I got to work with all of you to rediscover my excitement about teaching, to introduce you to scientific concepts and theories that I love, to see you love them too, to see my students struggle and succeed. I am so impressed with the undergraduate students I have met here. You've worked so hard and you've taught me so much about science and about life. I'm proud of this department which you all helped to build. We have created this together. How many people can say that about their college experience? Now we have another roadblock in our paths, a big one. COVID-19 is scary. Not only is it frightening because of its risk of mortality, but in a few months it's already changed all of our lives. We have lost people we love. It has changed your senior year, your graduation, your choices and options for your future. I want you to know that we will get past this, that this will not ruin your future. It's just a part of your path, a part of your process. We are Hokies. We will rise from this tragedy stronger and better. We have done it before. Already I've seen how Virginia Tech is tackling this epidemic. Our director, Dr. Sontheimer, along with many of the scientists here have successfully set up testing for the entire region in a very short amount of time. You will also find ways to use this experience to create a new brighter future for yourselves, even if it's not your original plan. At the start of the pandemic, I was supposed to go to Quebec to give a talk about my science. My family was really worried about me traveling internationally, so I canceled. It is the first time I have ever canceled a talk. My 11-year-old daughter came home from school and said to me, I am so sorry that I pressured you into staying. I know that this is your passion and that you love talking about science. I've never felt prouder of her or myself as a mother than at that moment, that I had taught her that one should work because you love what you do, and that she knew that her happiness meant more to me than any trip or talk. So as you leave this beautiful place, remember that you are just at the start of your path. Enjoy the trip, and don't be in such a hurry to get there that you miss the scenery. This is not goodbye, but instead, until next time, seek something to do that you can love and that excites you, even if no one else cares about it. Go out there and create, no matter what you end up doing. I want to close with a quote from Marcel Proust from The Remembrance of Things Past. If you haven't read it, it's probably one of the most beautiful works ever created on the nature of memory from a writer who was an invalid and had to stay home all the time. What an abyss of uncertainty whenever the mind feels that some part of it has strayed beyond its own borders, when it, the seeker, is at once the dark region through which it must go seeking, where all its equipment will avail it nothing. Seek? More than that, create. It is face to face with something which does not so far exist, to which you alone can give reality and substance, which you alone can bring into the light of day. Congratulations, class of 2020. This year's student commencement speakers are Lauren Hakey and Sid Madhaven. 
Lauren is an experimental neuroscience major with an unwavering commitment to serving others. She's the co-founder and president of Synapse, a student-led organization that builds supportive communities for individuals with brain injury. Impressively, we were only one of five universities selected from over 100 applications to establish a chapter of Synapse at Virginia Tech. And this is due in no small part to Lauren's energy and resolve. Lauren is also on the founding executive committee for New Rosi, the National Honor Society in Neuroscience. She has been a teaching assistant for two undergraduate neuroscience courses, a researcher in Dr. Sondheimer's lab, and a research ambassador for the College of Science. She's even presented her research to President Sands. When you put academics and extracurriculars aside, it's Lauren's compassion and commitment to serving others that defines her. She embodies the Virginia Tech motto, ut prosum. Impressively, Lauren was recently selected as a Fulbright Scholar, which is the most widely recognized and prestigious international exchange program in the world. This fall, Lauren will begin studying brain injury and regenerative medicine in Heidelberg, Germany. Sid Madhaven is a clinical neuroscience major with impressive accomplishments in research. He's presented his research at nine different venues, including the International Society for Neuroscience. He's the recipient of several prestigious scholarships and fellowships, including the ACC Creativity and Innovation Grant and the Commonwealth Health Research Board Fellowship. Sid has always been an ardent supporter of the School of Neuroscience. He was one of two students that initiated the charter application for New Rosi, and he worked hard over the last year to get that chapter established here at Virginia Tech, serving as its founding vice president. Sid was also among the first ambassadors for the School of Neuroscience, mentoring incoming freshmen and transfer students. Sid can be well described as a true science geek, and I mean that in the best way. Sid is analytical, meticulous in his pursuit of knowledge, and is willing to discuss science with anybody at any level. He was recently accepted into a top graduate program, the University of Southern California Buck Institute PhD program in the biology of aging. Even more, he was recently awarded the USC Provost's Fellowship, a distinction awarding only to those that show outstanding promise in academic research. Please welcome our student speakers, Lauren Hakey and Sid Madhaven, and thank you both for being here to speak with us today. Hello. In honor of the fact that we couldn't be all together today, I wore my best pair of PJs. Couldn't ditch the COVID uniform even on this most prestigious of virtual occasions. I hope you all are social distancing with as many people who love you as possible. To all of us nerds from the School of Neuroscience tuning in from around the world, today is finally our day. So wherever you are, I hope you are also wearing your finest PJs on this momentous occasion. But seriously, I am honored and deeply proud to be receiving a degree from Virginia Tech School of Neuroscience alongside such a tremendously talented group of peers. While we will not be able to look back on a class photo, we will have the memories of making giant webs of neurocircuitry at three in the morning for our 7 a.m. exams. Thank you, Dr. Klein and Dr. Gilbert. But maybe we'll want to forget the hike from NCV to Lit and Raisin back. I would like to start by saying it has been a privilege to be your classmate. The most meaningful part of being your classmate for me was experiencing how collaborative you all are. We have learned this from the best. We have witnessed this compassionate spirit in our state-of-the-art professors. And I say state-of-the-art specifically because y'all are like machines. Your drive, your passion for sharing knowledge, and your spirit is unmatched. Our professors have shown us many scientific perspectives and how to think critically about any question we have, which has ultimately prepared us to take the reins and lead our field. 
It takes decades to establish the depth and breadth required when thinking holistically about neuroscience. But our professors have integrated that knowledge at the very root of all they have taught us. So many of our teachings have encouraged us to communicate science. This is our most important role in society for any career we may pursue with our fabulous linearity degree. We must educate and inform the public in order to create change. In doing that, there will be pivotal roles for which our professors have prepared us. From here, we will stand on the shoulders of our favorite giants, and it warms my heart to know they will be excited to witness the greatness that we will achieve. With that being said, our fields are not ready for us. We are a force to be reckoned with. The power and intellect, creative thinking, and individual passions that have not only made this program dynamic, but have also inspired much strength for each other is nothing to be taken lightly. Many of us were drawn to the field of neuroscience because there is so much unknown and much to contribute. We have been energized by each other's personal reasons for pursuing such a challenging degree. This isn't the only thing that makes us a unique class. Three quarters of us are women in STEM, which simply just kicks ass. Many of us have disabilities that do not define, but rather inform our character. We have proven that being disabled does not mean unable. We are a special breed of hard workers. Many of us are paving the way, being the first college graduate of their family, myself included. And speaking of having disabilities and being a first generation student, I would be absolutely remiss in not thanking some of the people who have guided me every step of the way. My family's steadfast love and unwavering support has truly made all the difference. I'd like to extend a special thank you to Dr. Sontimer, Dr. Phillips, Annie Labe, Dr. Dipin Patel, and SSD. I would have never made it without their support and guidance. I know you all will agree with me in saying that we and our faculty have built meaningful relationships with each other that have guided each of us here today. We are a class who will continue to overcome and achieve in spite of the challenges thrown our way. This final semester took such an unexpected and unprecedented turn, it caught everyone off guard. Our class, faculty and students alike, effortlessly shifted to Zoom meetings and to webcam exams with such ease and grace, you'd never know we missed some of the biggest moments we were supposed to enjoy after four years of dedication. While today is a day of well-deserved celebration, this is far from what we had all imagined. Who would have predicted the ending of Wally would also become the ending of our senior year? We eat, sleep, work, relax, and watch TV, and fail to exercise all in the same spot. But we've leveled up from our predictable movie characters because we also graduated in it. Right here, this is it. Don't let this virtual background fool you. I assure you I am in my living room. I want to share one final thought with you all. Since not everyone had the privilege of being in one of Dr. Phillips' classes this semester, I would like to share a sentiment she offered that gave me some much needed peace today will not satisfy. A delayed ceremony would not create the memories we needed. Even a month from now, we will be in a different place, much less a few months to a year. All we can do now is what we have been doing with grace, to be thankful for the memories that we do have. I hope this day gives us all the closure that we need. I really had a difficult time preparing to speak to you all because in doing so, it would become real. And in doing so, it would also mean goodbye. Hello. While graduation is an enormous achievement in and of itself, it can feel like an empty success unshared. Although this moment isn't coming out in the way that we'd planned, do not let that diminish what we've achieved. We've completed something monumental, and nothing can take that away from us. While this pandemic has been unexpected and upsetting, I don't want to spend this time thinking about what could have been. I want to use this time to celebrate all that we have and will accomplish. I think it's important to acknowledge all the helping hands in our success. It's taken more than just a village to nurture and mentor each one of us. Firstly, I want to thank my family. My parents, grandparents, and sister have believed in me unconditionally and have been instrumental in my success. When I was 13 and announced that I was going to study the brain, there was definitely some grumbling, but in the eight years since, I've received only their unwavering support. Thank you to all my friends for the help that you've given and the memories we've made. Thank you to you, the class of 2020, for being there every step of the way. I wouldn't trade the late night NCV study sessions or the 7 a.m. Klein and Gilbert exams for anything. Thank you to all my professors who have made the past four years unforgettable. Of all my professors, specifically thank you to Dr. Phillips, Dr. Sontheimer, Dr. Shu, and Dr. Bozinski for all that you've done to nurture my personal and professional development. Finally, 
Thank you to the School of Neuroscience faculty and staff for creating an amazing program and tirelessly supporting us students. All your work has had a profound impact on our development. If you're asked to define Virginia Tech in a single word, you're likely to wind up saying home. There's something magical about Blacksburg. While the mountains, beautiful sunsets, and hokey stone play a big part in creating this feeling, a lot of what makes Blacksburg home is the people. Our faculty make it a point to create a bond with their students, to be friends as well as mentors. It's this amazing sense of community that makes being a Hokie so great and graduation so hard. Another important symbol of identity at Virginia Tech are the pylons. Out of all the pylons, Oot Prosum is probably the most quintessential definition of Hokie spirit. However, I don't think translating Oot Prosum as that I may serve fully captures the complexity of the Hokie spirit. Serve usually implies performing an obligation or duty. When Utprosum was introduced, Virginia Tech was more military academy than university, so this translation made sense. The nice thing about translations is that they're inherently flexible, or plastic. I believe Hokies don't just look to complete a task. They look to go above and beyond. Virginia Tech is focused on producing the next generation of innovators, and innovators don't just do what they're told. They blaze a new trail. Virginia Tech isn't only a military academy anymore. It's also the home of the first school of neuroscience in the world. This program is a historic landmark in the new age of science. Regardless of your chosen translation, I believe neuroscience is the embodiment of new prosum and the hokey spirit. I like to think of neuroscience as the final frontier. When I was little, I really wanted to be an explorer. Venturing into the unknown and sharing new findings with the world seemed like the most exciting thing. I've come to realize that as neuroscientists, we're not too far from that. To the layman, neuroscience seems comparable to rocket science. And we often forget that because of how much time we spend with the subject. We're the mind studying the mind. You cannot deny how special that is. Wherever you may go, it's important to never lose that spark. In the past four years, some of the most imaginative, driven, and enthusiastic people I've met have been neuroscience majors. I've noticed a certain hunger to achieve that doesn't just apply to science. It's no surprise to me that the Virginia Tech Awards for Outstanding Student and Outstanding Undergraduate Researcher went to neuroscience majors, and that we're not only going to medical school, graduate school, or other jobs, but are also athletes, artists, dancers, musicians, and everything in between. All of you chose this major for a reason. There are a lot of careers out there, and having a neuroscience major isn't a prerequisite for a single one of them. You chose this major because you wanted something different and special. You chose this major because your excitement and creativity needed an outlet, and neuroscience was the perfect fit. You chose neuroscience because you're a trailblazer. You haven't made it your responsibility to play a part in inventing the future. Congratulations, class of 2020. For those who have passed and for those to come, continue to reach for excellence, but I already know you will. Each year, the College of Science solicits nominations from each department for two student awards, the Outstanding Senior Award and the Outstanding Senior Research Award. The Outstanding Senior Nominee is selected based on outstanding performance across several areas, academic achievement, extracurricular involvement, leadership, and service to the community. This year, the School of Neuroscience selected Mia Gennario for this distinction. Mia is a clinical neuroscience major with exemplary scholastic performance that's placed her in the top 10 of her graduating class. Mia was an undergraduate researcher for two years in the Department of Biomedical Sciences and Pathology. She was also awarded a summer research fellowship through the Fralin Biomedical Research Institute. Mia has contributed to her community by volunteering in an after-school program at a local elementary school and by collecting and distributing food to disadvantaged children through the organization Micah's Backpack. She's also interned at a medical facility that served disadvantaged individuals in her community. Mia has been actively involved in leadership during her time at Virginia Tech. She was a founding member of a team that launched the Mid-Atlantic Undergraduate Research Conference, and most recently she served as its finance director. She served on the executive board of Delta Epsilon Mu, the national pre-health fraternity, serving as both its secretary and its vice president. 
She's also been a teaching assistant in Introduction to Neuroscience and a Life Sciences Mentor for Minority and First Generation students. Mia recently accepted a position as a medical assistant in Northern Virginia. She has plans of going to medical school and becoming a pediatrician. Well done, Mia. The Outstanding Senior Research Award is awarded to students with demonstrated excellence in undergraduate research. Rishi Devulapali was selected as the School of Neuroscience's nominee for this award. Rishi's remarkable accomplishments in research were recognized by the rest of the College of Science, and he was unanimously selected as the College of Science Outstanding Senior Researcher. Rishi is a clinical neuroscience major who joined the lab of Dr. Timothy Jerome in January of 2018. In the last two and a half years, he's developed an extraordinary range of technical skills in the lab. He has five total publications, two of which are first author, with a third first author paper currently under review, a notable accomplishment at the undergraduate level. He's presented four first author presentations and was slated to present his fifth this spring. Rishi has also been a teaching assistant for the Introduction to Neuroscience course, a general chemistry tutor and recitation instructor, and a Virginia Tech research ambassador. Next year, Rishi will be working for AmeriCorps, serving as a 10th grade geometry teacher for at-risk students in Boston. Rishi has plans to go to medical school and ambitions of becoming a neurosurgeon. We're proud of you, Rishi. This year, one of our own was selected as Virginia Tech's undergraduate student of the year. Lauren Hakey was selected from students across the university based on her leadership, her scholastic achievements, and her acts of service. I already described Lauren's many accomplishments and contributions when I introduced her as our student speaker. Right now, I'll expand on those a little. As a part of Synapse, the national organization that she founded a chapter of here at Virginia Tech, she created a brain injury support group. This is a group of local individuals from our community with brain injuries. They meet twice a month, sharing a meal and providing support for each other throughout their recovery. I've had the honor of attending one of these meetings, and it is remarkable how Lauren can connect with anyone and make them feel comfortable sharing their story with a complete stranger. In addition to the support group, she built a partnership with Neuro Restorative, a local rehabilitation center, and with Carilion Clinic in Roanoke. We're proud of the work Lauren has done in our community, bringing awareness to brain injury and providing support to those that need it. Once she completes her Fulbright Scholarship in Germany, Lauren plans to obtain her PhD and hopes to combine her love for teaching, research, and nonprofit management in a career in academia. Congratulations, Lauren. And now I'd like to introduce to you the School of Neuroscience graduates for the class of 2020. Ola Damiola Adeshina. Yeyin An. Malika Imogene Ajose. Eric Akbar. Maxwell Amoako. Zoe Anderson. Megan Nicole Ansley. Megan Babington. Katie 
Marie Barnes. Robert Gates Bass III. Ben Batman. Courtney Baumfolk. Jennifer Lee Beecham. Nora Lee Beecroft. Sarah Belli. Matthew David Bergstresser. Rianca Bavsar. Hannah Elizabeth Bird. Amanda Lee Latell. Caitlin Sue Bolt. Taylor Sydney Boyd. Taylor Audrey Briscoe. Caitlin Elizabeth Burnick. Savannah K. Brooks. Abby Brown. Chelsea Bueller. Sophia Daniela Cadena Coro. Sarah Hope Carball. Catherine Cornavalli. Megan Elizabeth Casey. Cameron Elise Cashwell. Gabriel Morgan Coleman. Michaela Ann Colt. L. Kornman. Carolyn Michaela Cox. Catherine Creighton. Francesca Cizak. Hayden Davidson. Dana 
de Jaeger. Lake Dean. Rishi Kashyap Devulapali. Nista Dube. Christina East. Mariana Escalante. Caitlin Stephanie Fanning. Robbie Faconda. Caitlin Finn. Serena Fleming. Alexandra Marie Gauthier. Mia Christine Gennario. Elizabeth Ann George. Tezeda Gitnet Gesessi. Daniela Victoria Gill. Emma Rose Gonatowski. Jared Michael Green. Lauren Gutman. Lauren K. Hakey. Rachel Hyde. Katie Hogg. Emily Hudson Hurst. Brianna Janoka. Dylan Jenkins. Dana Johnson. Natalie Jones. Seok Min Kim. Abigail Kirkpatrick. Evelyn Ann Kuhn. Lisa Kripowitz.
Jordan Landry. Bavia Lankapali. Alexis Elaine Galacio Lapid. Madison Lee. Ian Levine. Nadia Monique Lewis. Siddharth Madhaven. Kaylee Monarchuk. Elizabeth Makara. Anu Muscari. Samantha Ann McChesney. Michael Justice McGregor. Reagan Myers. Jamie Lee Mustion. Ryan Nasser. Jacob Nelson. Madison Rose Noble. Neha Ogale. Jared Akira Okada. Valeria Ortiz Gareca. Mariam Nicole Watara. Alexis Nicole Pagan. Shriti Pant. Kyra Parker. Nicole Lorraine Parrots. Madison Grace Philhauer. Nikita Pike. Carolyn Nicole Pollock. Carly Porter. Kayla Purcell.
Riley Ream. Julianne Elizabeth Riley. Sasha Marie Reynolds. Alexandra Nicole Rhodes. Giselle Nicole Rivero Ballon. Forrest Robertson. Tenmaya Rhoda. Lauren Tyler Romhild. Amy Elizabeth Sabbath. Eric Sanderlin. Taylor Nicole Schaefer. Nikita Schroll McLaughlin. Chase Robert Schulte. Megan Walker Sadovi. Anna Shafi. Pooja Shethna. Claire Louise Shiflett. Rachel Violetta Silver. Alethea Joy Smith. Aaron Sorensen. Nicole Louise Spezio. Amber Elise Stevens. Michaela Grace Stevens. Samira Sankara. Rithika Suranani. Erica Song Townsend. Colleen Margaret Valentine. Katie Van Nuys. Wilhelm Harry Venets. Maria Villafuerte.
Rachel Elizabeth Ward. Alexandra Warren. Lauren Weaver. Addison Nicole Webster. Abigail Ray White. Hannah Eloise Wilding. Ryan Williams. Meredith Kate Wilson. Molly Mackenzie Woods. Christina Woodward. Sarah Victoria Wolverton. Taylor Marie Wynn. Congratulations, Class of 2020. Thank you for being a part of this virtual commencement ceremony. I hope that each of you are celebrating this occasion in some way. It may not be the way that you imagined, but don't let the circumstances hold back your pride and excitement. Before I let you go, I want to take a moment to leave you with some parting words of my own. Being a professor is a role that I don't take lightly. Being your professor has been particularly gratifying. I've watched you grow in maturity, in confidence, in communication skills, and as critical thinkers. I want to thank you for letting me be a part of your education. It's been a privilege. There's one thing inherent in all of us as neuroscientists. We're a bunch of nerds, and we're proud of that. We should be. But something that often comes from this nerdiness is a pursuit of perfection. We're ambitious, and we're overachievers. We set expectations for ourselves quite high, and when we fail to meet those often unrealistic expectations, it feels like failure. So I want to say this, have compassion for yourself. No one is perfect, and if you constantly chase perfection, you won't see all of the remarkable gifts you already possess. Instead, I urge you to seek new experiences, explore, discover, put yourself outside of your comfort zone, and don't be held back by a fear of failure. Disappointment leads to clarity, and failure leads to humility. Clarity and humility are two qualities that, in turn, lead to success. So go take risks and make mistakes. Just be sure that you learn from them. Remember to always keep learning. Whether you're 5 or you're 25 or you're 85, there is always something to be learned. Remember that while having goals as you go through life is important. Life is about the journey, not the destination. So enjoy the journey ahead. And lastly, I'll say something that I tell my children every day. Above all else, be kind. Kindness requires strength and courage. So have the courage to lift people up celebrate others' successes, and spark hope. Importantly, 
have the strength to be kind to yourself. Congratulations, Class of 2020. We are all so proud of you. I can't wait to hear about all of your future accomplishments, so please keep in touch with us. Good luck, and go Hokies.